When making selections in Photoshop, it's important to practice using the various selection tools because as you use them, you'll become more familiar on what they're good at selecting. And so in this demo, I would like to talk about kind of the basic selection tools that you can use. And so you can use the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, or the magnetic lasso tool to make various types of selections. And so the lasso tool can be used to make freeform selections. And there are a number of elements in this picture that I may want to select. Maybe I want to select the gondola from the, the lift. Maybe I want to select the green building. Um, but depending on what it is, I may want to use different selections. So let's talk about selecting the gondola. And I'm going to use the three different tools to select it to show you the different options and how they can be used. So the lasso tool requires a steady hand. And as you're using the lasso tool, you basically are making a selection. And so if you go away from the edge of the gondola, you're going to get whatever path you select. And when you're making a selection with the lasso tool, you must continue to push down on the mouse. As you go around and you make your selection, you can come back to the beginning. And when you get back to the beginning, you can release and it will make a selection. But as you can see, let me zoom out here. When I made that selection there, I didn't stay anywhere near where I wanted to go, and it made a weird selection. And uh, randomly, it kind of looks like, is it called Delicate Arch uh, down in southern Utah? And so maybe that's not the best um, tool to use to select the gondola, but maybe that's the only one that you know how to use right now. So let's talk about how you could use the lasso to make this selection. And so when you're making a selection with the lasso tool, you want to zoom in. So command plus or minus or control plus or minus on a PC. You can zoom in as close as you want to the image to make your selection. And so with the lasso tool, I might be able to come through here and make a selection. But the longer I use the lasso tool, the more likely I am to mess up. And so maybe I come in here and I make a selection of just the corner. If you hold shift, you can continue to add to your selection. And so I make a little selection and I come back and now I'm going to try to overlap that selection and just add a little bit more. And in slower pieces, maybe I can go around and holding shift every time you want to add more to the selection. If you're selecting and you go out too far by accident, you can always hit the option key on a Mac or the alt key on a PC. And so now whatever you select will be subtracted. So if I want to get rid of this area over here, I would start on the outside of the selection. I'm holding the Option key on my Mac and Alt key on your PC. Uh, and as you drag, you're basically making a second selection. I'm going to select all the area out here that I don't want, and it will be removed from my selection. And so with the Lasso tool, you can go back and forth and make your selection in smaller chunks, and then maybe zoom in and refine your selection. I don't know if you can see it on the screen because of the colors, but I've got a little bit too much right here. I could use the Option key to get rid of it, or you can use the Shift key to add a couple pixels back in, and you can go around your whole gondola until you select the whole thing. Now, I would say the Lasso tool is the one that people usually like to use the most when they're first learning selection tools, but if you push and hold on the Lasso, you can see that there is a polygonal Lasso tool and a magnetic Lasso tool. The polygonal one is um, nice because you don't have to make a consistent selection. So with the lasso, once I start, I have to keep going, and as soon as I let go, it's going to close my selection. I'm doing Command or Control D to deselect when I do those examples. Uh, the next option is the polygonal one, and every time you click, you're basically adding a little, um, it's a good word for it, so I want to call it an anchor point because that's a, a term that, that is what we use in in graphic arts, but it's not really an anchor point. You're just putting a stopping point. And so what you can do is you can click and it will start your selection and then you can zoom in. So I'm going to do um, command plus on my keyboard or control plus on the PC and you can click all the way around your selection. Click, 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 click um, until you get, let's zoom out a little bit, all the way around the outside of your shape until you're happy with the results. Now the downside of the polygonal lasso tool, so I'm just going to go really fast so you can see I'm clicking all the way along. Um, the downside of this is that they are geometric shapes as opposed to organic or freeform shapes. And so if you look really closely to the edge of the selection you're making, it's all kind of hard edges. And so when something is curved, you have to click a lot of times around the outside in order to get the curve. 
But the same thing applies with the polygonal lasso tool as the regular lasso tool, is you don't have to do the whole thing. You can come back with the shift key and start inside the selection when you're adding. So I'm going to start inside, doesn't matter where, and then come over to the outside and add to your selection. You can, oops. When you do the polygonal lasso tool, once you hit shift to add, you want to let go of the shift tool because it will make your selection have harder angles. You can also, can you see how there's a little hole in the gondola right here that shows the sky? If we zoom in there, you can use the option key, and so you'll get a, a negative. And when you click, you're now, whatever you create is going to be subtracted from your selection. And you can click around the outside until you make that selection. So now if I delete the, the selection I've made, I would be deleting the gondola. We'll pretend the whole thing is, is selected. And you can see that it left a hole where the, where the sky would show through. And so if I'm making this selection to change the color of the gondola, or maybe I'm making the selection because I want to then flip it and, and select everything behind it because I'm going to replace the sky image, it would allow the, the new sky to show through in that hole. Command or Control D will deselect that. The last option you have with your lasso tools is the magnetic lasso tool. And it's kind of supposed to be the best of both worlds. And so if we go back and we zoom in a little bit, let's zoom in the right way, Command or Control Plus. When you're making your lasso tool selection, once you click, you have to hold the mouse down the whole time you're making your path, and it, it's kind of hard and frustrating. And then if you're using the polygonal lasso tool, you have to click, 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 and you have to basically enter your path all the way around. The magnetic lasso tool is kind of the best of both worlds. So you click to start, but then you can let go of your mouse. You don't have to worry about it. But as you drag the mouse, Photoshop will try to figure out where the path is supposed to go. See how it added that little anchor point? And so it will, it will try to connect your path around the outside of the shape that it thinks that you're selecting. And so sometimes it does a good job but when the thing you're selecting and the thing next to it are close in color, sometimes it doesn't do the best job. So what you can do is if you start to move and it doesn't put a line where you want it to go, you can actually, I haven't clicked any time except for when I started, but if you click, you can actually guide the path and say, I want it to go there now, and I want it to go there, and I want it to go there. And so it is really a combination of the lasso tool, like as you draw it puts a line in, but you can also click to say it definitely has to go here and I have to have a sharp edge there. And as you go around, you can quickly make a selection of the thing you were trying to select. But see right here, it didn't grab what I wanted. It's in the shadow and not on the top of the bar. And so I am gonna just keep going and we'll pretend that I closed my shape Let's zoom out here, and we will pretend, we'll go all the way back down, we'll pretend that we went all the way around the gondola for time's sake. Come back to the beginning and click and it will close the selection. And so now I have a selection of my gondola. What I would have to do is I would have to go back to where it messed up, and then I'd have to add and subtract from the selection just like I did with the other tools. And so in this case, it might, since it's a straight line, I might want to switch back to the polygonal lasso tool, hold the shift key, click inside the selection, and then you can add to the selection to get the harsh edge. And then now, if we zoom out, I have the area selected that I want. And so I would say these are good kind of beginner selections. There are better selection tools that you'll use once you get better at using Photoshop. But for now, it gives you kind of a foot in the door. Um, I'd like you to use this skill set to be able to complete the first activity for the skills practice. And so what I'd recommend is before you move on to the next video, I would um, do that activity. And when you feel confident with using these three selection tools, you can move on to the next skills practice. And then one thing of note is that there is a lecture that covers a lot of things. And then there's these skills practice videos that you're currently watching. The skills practice videos are not in in lieu of the lecture. The lecture should be watched first. These are kind of like a backup or a refresher on key topics. They don't cover everything that's covered in the lecture, and so if you're just doing these skills practices, you're missing out on a lot of content from the lecture.